Welcome back folks. Today we have a, a very simple little um, do-it-yourself project which I think is um, it's going to come in very handy especially for me it might for a bunch of other people too so I thought I'd, I'd actually make a video about it and um, so what I want to do is I want to build some you know quick little calibration boxes you know uh, little boxes like this that have some maybe resistors or capacitors or diodes whatever built in and then we can calibrate them. Now the diodes, of course, you don't really have to calibrate because their forward voltage depends a lot on a lot of things. And from one meter to the next, or from one device to the next, that forward voltage is gonna change depending on the current. But as far as resistors and capacitors are concerned, they have pretty standard values. And in a case like this, where they're not used that often, those values don't drift very often. Now you might think that, you know, sure, you could, you could use something like this or this, or even this, to calibrate a meter. But that means you have to measure it first with a, a meter of known calibration, then measure it with a meter to be calibrated. And it, you know, that going back and forth like that is uh, tedious. And besides, one of these instruments, which is a far more general use, is more likely to be used at the time. You might be using it to find out uh, the value is of a resistor that blew up or what value you need in order to make the circuit work right. And that's what these are great for. These are great for, great for, for figuring out what value of resistor you need in an unknown situation, but they're not so great for actually doing calibration. Now this one here, theoretically, you could, you could go through all these different values here and calibrate them and then put a calibration sheet on the back here. You could do that. But in this case, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna build my own little unit here and, um, it's just going to have six resistors in it, They're all the way from one ohm to one mega ohm, and uh, it's going to have a common, and then four or six uh, additional banana sockets. So I can just use a banana to banana cable to plug directly into the meter and test. And I'm going to calibrate it, and I'm going to write the calibration, put it on the back here, and then I'll know exactly what value I should be reading, and I can recalibrate it every once in a while. And all you have to do then is just take off that calibration sheet and put on a new one. So let's get started on this. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, lay this out. I'm going to draw a line down along here with a pencil, mark off where it needs to be drilled and over here. Then it's just a simple matter of drilling it, mounting these things, and then soldering everything up. And it should be all ready to go. This shouldn't take more than maybe a half an hour total to do. So why don't we get into that now? And uh, we'll, first off, we'll do the layout. So we've done the basic layout. Um, this is exactly uh, 102 millimeters long. So starting out here at 11 millimeters and going up to 91 millimeters, I put in every 16 millimeters little tick along the line that is 11 millimeters from the edge of the board. And also one here in the center, also 11 millimeters from. So this will be the common, and these will be each of the resistors. So we'll, we'll eventually, when we go to put them, solder them up, we'll have a, a copper rail going down here that's connected to the common, and then we'll put the resistors in for each of the sockets over to the common rail. So now we just have to drill the holes. All right. We got all the holes drilled. Now before I drilled them, after I marked them, I just put a little dent in the plastic, one of these little awls. It just helps to line up the drill bit a little bit better. And uh, now we're just gonna get some isopropyl alcohol in there and clean off those pencil marks. And then mount up the sockets. There, that's good enough for Canada. All right, here we go. Let's mount these up. Bummer. So it looks like I made the holes a little bit too small. I'm gonna to have to go back and correct that. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. And we got the holes the right size now. So let's start uh, 
installing all these. I want to make the, uh, the solder tabs in towards the middle there, because that's the way the resistors are going to go. We'll just put these in loosely for now and then tighten them up with a, a nut driver in a minute. I don't know what we missed there, but the uh, camera turned off somewhere in there. I have no idea when it turned off and what it got, but we'll, we'll find out. One final trim on the end of this copper bus. Snug it up and there we have our resistors installed. Now, it's just a uh, top on the case. It snaps right in there. There we go. Now we're ready to calibrate it. Okay, now we're all set up to calibrate this. It doesn't really matter exactly what precision or what value the resistors are because we're going to go through this process. We're going to use this five and a half digit meter that is fully calibrated and we're going to use this as the standard. So all we have to do is write down the value that it shows us and that's the value that we'll use for the resistor. So we have to give each resistor enough time to, to warm up and we go through them one by one and once the value stabilizes, we write that down on this sheet and then we're going to transfer those values to labels beside each one of these plugs here or sockets and then we'll have a calibrated resistance standard that we can use to quickly go through any other multimeter and then we do the same of course with the capacitance box and like I said the diode box is uh, we, we don't calibrate that at all there's no sense in calibrating a diode box but uh, let's run through this and um, we'll uh, write down the values of each of these resistors and we'll, we'll come back when we have this thing all labeled up. Okay, so that first one is 1.053 ohms. And the next one Okay, after enough time, this one came out to exactly 100.000 ohms. Yeah, I went and got myself a coffee in the meantime because I'm going to have to sit here and, and, and wait for each of these. Um, so let's move on to the next one and uh, allow it time to settle. All right, we're back. Uh, this one looks like it's topped out at nine, nine, nine point seven seven ohms. All right, on to the next one. All right, now we're at. 9.9996 K ohms.
Next. All right, this one's at 100.115. Okay, on to the next. All right, this one seems to stabilize, stabilized at 10.0851 mega ohms. All right then, I'm gonna get out the Dymo label maker and make up some labels for these and I'll put the labels right on the box. And here we are. We've got it all fully calibrated. So I've got a repair, uh, a meter in repair right now. And I should be producing the video on that shortly. In fact, I was going to put that out video before this one, but I got held up in, in that repair a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to then run that meter through this and some other things to calibrate it. But this will be one of the items I use to see if the calibration is in effect in that meter. But uh, yeah, so on now to the uh, capacitor box, and then I'll do the diode box, and uh, yeah, well, then we'll finish this up. So we're going to continue on now with the other two boxes, the capacitance box and the diode box. Uh, capacitance box, we're going to use 22 PF, 470 PF, 22 nanofarads, nanofarads, 470 nanofarads, 22 microfarads, and 470 microfarads. For the diodes, we're going to use a germanium diode, a silicon diode, red LED, amber LED, green LED, and blue LED. They all have increasing forward voltages. And uh, we'll get started on it. This time, I'm, when I mark out, I'm going to mark out this one here, and then I'm going to attach it to this one with some tape. And I'm going to drill both of them at the same time. That'll save me some time as well. All right, that idea worked out pretty well. I also put in the holes for the LEDs. I got one of them a little bit off, but eh, you know, we'll live with it. Now, this is going to be the red, amber, green, and blue. So I want to insert them in that order. But uh, what I do is I, I drill these a little bit smaller than the diameter of the LED. Um, I, actually, I think it's 3 16th. I, I drill the hole, uh, which is uh, convenient because they're in the millimeter size. So 316 is just right. And then what I do is uh, let me verify the color of the LED and I put them in one by one using one of these, again, this, this all thing. And what I do is I, I, I squeeze it in through the plastic to about this point here and that spreads the plastic part. And then when I insert the LED, then the plastic relaxes against it and holds that LED in really, really well. Um, so let's see, let's, let's, uh, we're looking for Looking for red here. No, that's green. Okay, we've got them all built now. Now I've just got to uh, calibrate this and this. Now, 
these uh these ones here the capacitance and the diode ones i'm probably only going to do two digits so and i give this is turns out to be 21 pf or 22 pf i'm just gonna write 22 i'm not gonna write 22.0331 first of all uh because of the leads involved and just the very nature of the capacitors themselves they're not that accurate so just these are just ballpark measurements that's why they're so far apart 22 470 22 narrow fires 470 narrow fires 22 uf 470 uf and i'm probably just going to put down you know two or three digits for each of them and the same here same with the voltage for the diodes because every meter has a very slightly different current going th put through their diode testing and so it, it, it'll it'll produce a different voltage so these are just ballparks so it might be 0.3 and this might be 0 0.7 and 1.7 or 1.8 and 1.9 2.5 and 2.8 something of that nature so we're going to get them up onto the digital multimeter here and uh, we'll go through them very quickly and i will note uh, what values come up and those are the values i'll put in along here all right so we got the first one here is um, in the lowest range it's 20 coming up with 23 picofarads yeah we'll move on up to the next Let's settle for a second or two four hundred and thirty microfarads all right move on to the diode some of the diode ones we might have to test um, using a, a power supply so um, because I'm not sure if this meter here will actually light up a diode a blue LED I should say it might be more specific there the green LED and you see that's showing it open so we'll have to use a power supply for that okay so let's uh, set this power supply to uh, like one milliamp oh, two, I'll leave it at two milliamps that should be around about right Okay, so uh, there we got 2.65 volts on the green. So we've got 2.7 volts. And then we'll go up to the blue. It should be a tad higher. Yeah, 2.8 volts. All right. So that's it. So we've got our calibration now for the capacitors and for the diodes. I'll do up the Dymo labels, uh, stick them on, and uh, we'll look at the final results. So there we are, all finished. I got these labels on here. I ran out of the uh, white paper labels, and I had to start using these clear plastic labels. They unfortunately don't like to stick to plastic very much. So I'm going to try a a heat gun at some point to uh, get them to stick a little bit better apply a little heat to them maybe the adhesive will work a little better but there we have resistance capacitance diodes um, nice uh, calibrated little boxes for rapidly checking out uh, whether or not a, a multimeter is close to specification or not and it's not gonna uh, they're not gonna be useful for full calibration or anything like that but they will be great for a quick and dirty checkout so I hope you enjoyed this video and we are going to use them to check out a meter that I am currently repairing. So why don't you uh, click uh, subscribe and click the bell for notification and that way you'll get to see that video too when it comes out. So thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.